Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how I drew this study of curly black fur using pastels step by step. I'm Kirsty Rebecca and I make drawing and painting tutorials that are easy to follow even if you're just starting out. If you did want to follow along with a full length real time version of this tutorial where I talk you through every step of the process, then I have that available for you over on Patreon. There's a link in the description if you want to check it out. So I'm just going to go through the tips and techniques that I think would be the most useful for when you're drawing black fur and also curly fur. For this piece, I'm using pan pastel for the base, and then I'm also using some pastel pencils for some of the details on top. You don't have to use pan pastels if you don't want to. You can use pastel pencils for the entire thing or pastel sticks if you want to, but I like using the pan pastels and if you want to know more about those I have quite a few videos on my YouTube channel where I've used the pan pastel so go and check those out if you want to know a little bit more. So the first tip is to not use white for the highlights on black fur or grey for that matter. When you're drawing fur or pretty much any subject actually it reflects the colours around it, especially black and white fur it really reflects those colours that are around the subject. So in this case, there's quite a lot of purples and blues and reds amongst the black fur. So when you're looking at your reference photo, try it and see if you can see those colors. And a good way to bring out some of those colors in your reference photo is to actually hype up the saturation of that photo a little bit. So get into a photo editor on your phone or on the computer and just put that saturation up a little bit and you should be able to see some of those reds and purples pop out using that method. And obviously don't copy the high saturation version exactly because it's going to be, you know, quite bright, but include some of those colors that you see in those areas throughout the black fur. It's going to make it look a lot more realistic that way. The section of the reference photo that I cropped for this piece is actually one of the highlight areas just because you can actually see the dark shadows as well as the highlight areas on black fur. So I find that a lot of people don't really have issues in the shadows when working with black. But when they get to the highlights and the midtones, that's when they struggle with the colors because they don't really know what colors to use. So that's why I chose this section. You can see some of those really dark shadows, but also there's a lot of midtones and highlights as well. So the one thing that you may notice is that black fur is not just black. Like I was talking about earlier, I'm only using black in the darkest shadows. And even then I'm mixing other colors in with the black. So when you use black by itself in your artwork, it can look really flat and quite dull. And a lot of artists don't like using black at all in their artwork. They prefer to mix their colors. So if you're working in oil or acrylic, a common way to mix a black is to use ultramarine blue and like burnt umber. So it's sort of a darker blue and a darker brown. And when you mix those two colors together, it creates a really nice rich color that is close to black without being that flat sort of black from a tube. But when you're working with colored pencils and pastels and that kind of thing, it can be quite hard to get those really dark colors without using black. So for me, I do use it, but I always mix in blues and purples and reds and just other colors other than that black that I'm using, just so it doesn't look as flat. It actually looks much richer and more vibrant if you do have those other colors in there. And another thing to note is that the shadows and the highlight areas are not all the same color. So each shadow in each area of your piece is going to have slightly different colors. If you look at your reference photo closely, you'll notice that there are some areas where there are slightly more purples in the shadow or some more blue or some more purple in that shadow. So you can't just pick one shadow color, for example, and apply that everywhere. And that's the same for the highlights as well. There are different colors throughout those highlights. So you'll get some highlights that are a lot more blue and a lot more red and a lot more purple and that kind of thing. So you don't want to just take like a gray or a light blue and apply that to every highlight. You really want to look at the different colors throughout the entire piece and each clump of fur and really pick those colors to make it look more realistic and a bit more varied as well. So when you're drawing curly fur in general, try and look at the chunks or the like sort of clumps and clusters of the fur rather than worrying about individual hairs. So when I start doing a pet portrait that has curly fur like this, I'm going to come through and either block in my highlight areas or block in my shadow areas and then go from there. So in this case, I went into the highlight areas first and just blocked in all of the areas that were the lightest value that I could see. And then I went back through and added in some of my darker values. So the darkest shadows 
and then I'm coming back through with my mid-tones after that. And it does look quite blotchy to start with. It really doesn't look like fur at all. But if you try and block in where those highlights and shadows and mid-tones are, and then you can layer on top of that and start creating some of that fur detail as your layers build up. And I say this all the time, but I don't add every single individual piece of fur. When something is this close, like in this fur study, you will see a little bit more of those individual fur pieces. Like I've added a lot of wispy hairs at the end as well, but... In general, if you're drawing an entire portrait, like if you've got an entire dog's face on like an eight by 10 piece, you won't be able to see a lot of that fur detail. So try and look at those clumps and clusters to create the shape of that curl rather than looking at every individual hair. But that being said, make sure that you're still doing your pencil strokes in the right direction. So every time you're adding in pencil strokes or if you're working with the pan pastels like I have in the base layer here, you want to make sure that you're applying those strokes in the same direction as that curl of the fur, just so that it gives that general gist of the direction of the hair in that clump. I always recommend starting out with a good reference photo, and that may sound obvious, but especially if you're working on black animals or white animals, you really want to make sure that the photo of that animal was taken in natural lighting. A lot of the time if you're doing pet portraits the photo was taken inside with quite yellow lighting or just not very good lighting and it changes the color of what the fur actually is. So I try and get the customer or the client to take a photo of their pet outside. So if you get them to take a photo of the dog or whatever in the shade rather than in direct sunlight as well that really helps to make sure that it's been lit by natural light but not too bright and that will just give a really nice natural lighting and it will make the fur look more realistic that way it's more the natural color of that actual fur rather than trying to work from a photo where it was taken inside you also want to make sure that when you zoom in on your reference photo you can actually see some of that fur detail you don't want to work from a photo that's so blurry you can't see those individual chunks and clusters of the fur especially if you're working on curly fur it can be really quite hard to try and guess which direction those curls and that kind of thing are going and you really want to be able to see that difference between those shadows and highlights as well. So making sure that the photo is a relatively good quality photo where when you zoom in, you can see all of those details. Before I share my next tip, if you'd like to improve your drawing and painting skills even further, then my Patreon channel is the solution for you. From as little as $4 per month, you will have access to every tutorial that I've previously uploaded on your chosen tier level in a variety of mediums like pastel, colored pencil, charcoal, watercolor, and more. There are tutorials available for a range of subjects like wildlife, birds, landscapes, still life, flowers, and portraits. If you would like to view the entire Patreon tutorial library before joining us, I'll also leave that link in the description for you as well. Not only are my tutorials full length, real time and fully narrated with clear instructions and explanations, but you will also have access to the original reference photo, a traceable outline and a list of suppliers, including the exact color names I'm using. So you really can relax and follow along every step of the way. Every month I upload brand new tutorials to the Patreon library so you can grow and develop your drawing and painting skills and take your art to the next level. You can also join in on our members chat group where you can ask questions or advice or share your artwork and you can talk to other members in the Patreon community. And the best part is that there are no lock-in contracts so you can upgrade or downgrade to a different tier level or you can cancel your pledge at any time if Patreon isn't right for you. So why not give it a go? The link is in the description if you want to check it out. Another good tip for artwork in general is to not worry about having the perfect colour. A lot of people ask me what colours to use for black fur or a tiger or like dark skin tones or whatever it is that they're working on. And the truth is that there isn't a specific set of colors that you can use for a specific subject. So every black animal that I do is gonna have a completely different set of colors depending on what lighting that picture was taken in or the animal itself or the shadow or the highlight area or whatever, like there's not gonna be a specific set of colors. I could take a photo of the same person in four different types of lighting and it's gonna be a completely different set of colors. If you're working in a more cartoon style or like illustrations and that kind of thing, and then yeah, you can use a sort of skin color or whatever, but 
when you're trying to create a realistic piece, that's not really how it works. And a good way to be able to find out what colors are actually in your piece is by doing a color swatch sample. So this here on the screen is a, an example of the color swatches that I attach to all of my Patreon tutorials so that my students can actually see what colors are in each area. And you can really easily create one of these just by using Photoshop or an online editor. And you literally just use an eyedropper tool to pinpoint that area and find out what that color is and then literally draw a swatch coming off of that area to the side. If you are a member on Patreon, I do have a real time tutorial showing you how you can create that color swatch chart, but that is a really good idea to be able to help you see what those colors are, especially on black animals. And this way you can clearly see how many different colors are actually in that black fur. So when it comes to actually choosing your colors, it's really not that important to have the exact same colors as what you see in the reference photo either. I could have used a lot of different blues for this piece, but as long as I've picked the right value, so making sure that it's not too dark or too light in comparison to that area on the reference photo, that's what's more important than picking the exact same color blue. For something to look realistic, it's more about those shadows and highlights, like your values, and making sure that your proportions are right, rather than choosing the perfect color or getting as much detail as you possibly can in your piece. Those two things are not that important in comparison to your proportions and your values. So I don't have thousands of different colored pastel pencils. I only have a few blues to choose from, for example. So if I needed a lighter red or a lighter blue, for example, than what I can see in my set, I'll go through and add in whatever blue I have and whatever red I have or brown or whatever color I need in that area. And then I might come through with a lighter color on top of that just to lighten it up. And I'll do the same for dark areas as well. So you don't have to find the exact same color from your set. You can layer colors on top of each other to help create that color that you need. So if you notice that there's a section that's on your artwork that is too dark or too light, you can always come through with a dark color or a light color to alter that. And when it comes to your details, a lot of people think that if you add a lot of detail, that's what's going to make your artwork look more realistic. And like I was saying earlier, that's not really the case. If you step back from your artwork and look at it from a normal viewing distance, it can look realistic without having super fine details there and having every single strand of fur drawn in, as long as your shadows and your highlights are correct. A good example of that is like when you go to an art gallery or a museum and you see those really beautiful paintings that look realistic, but then when you get close, it's just brush strokes and colors, like there's no detail there at all. So that's the kind of look that I'm trying to go for with my artwork. I'm really not that fussed about getting every tiny little detail. And I know a lot of people like to do that. For me, I don't want to spend 50 to 100 hours on each piece just to try and get it to look exactly like the photo. I'd rather spend, you know, less than 10 hours on my artwork and move on to another piece because it looks realistic from a distance anyway. And I also find that it actually shows a little bit more of your artistic style as well. Having those pencil strokes and colors and brush strokes and that kind of thing throughout your artwork really just gives it a bit more interest. It shows a little bit more of you as an artist as well. So there's a lot of reasons why I prefer to leave it a little bit more expressive is the word, I guess. And it's totally up to you though. Like if you want to spend that long on a piece and add in every single little strand of fur, you totally can. But for me, I just don't think it's that important and I don't enjoy doing that. So I don't. If you wanted to follow along with the full length real time version of this tutorial, where I talk you through every step of the process and give you even more tips and techniques, I have that available over on Patreon for you. There's a link in the description if you wanted to check it out. Otherwise, there's a playlist of some other pastel tutorials on the screen there that I thought you might find useful. So click on that and I'll see you over there.